please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, Ejo, e subscribe, subscribe, eh, hete. Face TV. Uswobi. Exchange and Lagos uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, we have been here uh, since 2010 when we acquired Airtel from Zain, and ever since this company has been able to roll out its network to the far and deep parts of Nigeria, launched 4G services ahead of competition, and uh, is now all set to launch 5G services today from Lagos. Uh, we'll be heading to Lagos immediately after this meeting. I had requested uh, a meeting with His Excellency, the President of Nigeria, uh, and I am glad that we were given time early in his tenure to talk about uh, Airtel, to talk about India, Nigeria, and importantly, the upcoming G20 uh, that is taking place in India. All in all, we had a very productive, very, very uh, uh, warm meeting uh, with His Excellency and the entire team of senior uh, people. Uh, and I must say I'm deeply touched with the speed and uh, clarity of mind that the president and his team have displayed within a very short period of time. One of the biggest problems for foreign investors in this country for many, many years has been lack of easy available of foreign exchange. We as foreign investors who have spent billions of dollars here do not mind paying whatever the market rate is. The market must decide. But to be prevented from importing critical infrastructure equipment, paying uh, uh, invoices to our partners like IBM and other uh, software agencies was making it extremely difficult for companies like Airtel, and I'm sure that must be the case with others as well. Uh, one of the key uh, changes that uh, His Excellency the President has made in the first few days of his tenure has been making Naira 
free float onto the market, letting the market decide, as opposed to CBN's very convoluted structure of four or five exchange rates, which was very difficult to navigate for companies like ourselves and many, many others, MNCs. As you've all seen, the Naira has devalued, uh, but uh, the worldwide markets have given a standing ovation to this move. And uh, the dollar bonds have strengthened here in uh, Nigeria, and generally there is an excitement in the investing and uh, uh, companies who are going to be coming uh, to put up their bases here in Nigeria. We also discussed um, uh, the larger agenda at G20. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India, um, uh, Shri Narendra Modi, has taken upon himself <coughs> to s give tremendous amount of su support to the agenda in Africa. I was appointed on, uh, under B20 as a chairman of Africa Economic Integration Council, which I am leading, and I presented him the work that we have done in that uh, council, which will be presented to G20 in uh, August, and I'm very hopeful that that particular um, uh, recommendation will be adopted by G20 in their meeting in September. This will en enable the African continent countries under AFCTA, the AFTA, and otherwise to trade between themselves in a more powerful way, in perhaps local currencies, ensuring that the duty advantages of trading within the country, uh, continent are better, and this continent flourishes for its one and a half billion and growing population as fast as they can. I also saw his president's deep commitment to removing poverty. I come from a country, uh, India, where we also have had decades of uh, poverty, which has been rapidly uh, minimized and eradicated in some parts through intervention of massive infrastructure investment, massive digital ecosystem creation, and using digital infrastructure to provide services by the government to its citizens, be that uh, direct benefit transfer in the form of cash in the hands of people, biometric-based uh, banking transactions, biometric-based health services. During the COVID time, India, as you know, through the biometric could uh, ensure that every citizen of the country was inoculated and vaccinated. And all these uh, things that the technology can offer and more are now fully at display in India and available to its friendly uh, countries in Africa like Nigeria. We discussed that part as well. I leave uh, 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 Abuja with great uh, excitement, uh, with uh, clear commitment from our side that we will make significantly more investments here, roll out 5G in a very faster way, put more fiber into the ground, put more data centers, and importantly, uh, you know, support the flourishing technology startup ecosystem, which again India has done extremely well. So I remain committed on behalf of Airtel and behalf of India. I want to offer my greetings and importantly thank uh, His Excellency the President of Nigeria for having taken the time to meet us with his key members of his team. So with that, I will hand over uh, briefly to Shekhan to make a few remarks. Thank you, Chairman. We came to say a big thank you to the President for the right environment he's uh, creating for businesses to try. And in our own case, Nigeria is a very big part of our agenda. We operate in 14 countries. Nigeria is the largest out of these 14 countries. And uh, we firmly committed to the growth of Nigeria. We firmly committed to the prosperity of this country. It's a country of 220 million people. And uh, we believe that for Africa to prosper, Nigeria must prosper. And that is why we're here. We're providing connectivity. We also support in different courses. Just last night, we launched uh, the seventh edition of our Yate Touching Lives program. <coughs> Most of you are very familiar with this program. What we do is to support uh, people who have any needs, whether there's a need for medical intervention, there's a need for community borrow. We do believe that for any entity, for any company to be a great entity or to be a great person, it must be a good one. That is part of our DNA. We're part of the communities where we operate. We earn our social license every day by supporting causes in our various communities. So it's not so much about making money for us, it's about making money in a sustainable manner by creating a much more prosperous community. And that's what we've done in all the countries where we operate in Africa. And we came to just emphasize our commitment to this country, to his excellency, the president. And we're looking for ways of uh, partnering the president in furthering the agenda of digitization of the country. And uh, my chairman has explained, I mean, to the president, how within a generation, 
like a miracle is happening in India through the power of digitization by combining the power of uh, connectivity with that of digital identity and that of a mobile wallet. The three clear futures have lifted so many millions out of poverty, creating the generation of prosperity for the largest uh, country in uh, Asia. And we just feel that thing can be transferred to the largest country in Africa. So once again, thank you for coming here this afternoon. We take a couple of questions and uh, I just wish everyone a very good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. exact number I can give you, but all I can tell you is $400 million is what we generally invest every year. With 5G, uh, the investment is only going to go up for the next two or three years uh, before it comes back to that same $350, $450 million a year. And uh, we have invested just under $4 billion since the time we have come into Nigeria. $4 million is being invested ongoing. And another about five, six to seven hundred million, depending on where the price negotiations happen. And also we are looking at the Naira rate settlement because that's a sudden movement right now that it has to be adjusted. There will be five to seven hundred million additional investment in the next two years. I came for the first time in 2010 before we made our investment. I had come to Lagos. I spent uh, a few days. I was deeply touched by the energy that I saw in Lagos. Uh, there, is a, there is chaos, and I come from India, I have seen chaos in many of my cities as I've grown up. But within that, there is a method, there is an energy, and one could see that if there is one country in Africa which has the potential to be the next big economic powerhouse, it clearly is Nigeria. That gave me very clearly a very strong reason for us to come and invest in a big way in uh, uh, Africa. And as Shagan rightly pointed out, out of the, at that time, 16 countries, we have sold out two countries, Sierra Leone and Burkina Faso. Nigeria was the largest piece. So without Nigeria, it was pointless for us to go into smaller countries, next door in Niger, Gabon, Chad. So without Nigeria, our Africa strategy doesn't work because that is the anchor of our Africa strategy. So that was the reason. And I can tell you, this country has tremendous future with 220 million people, young people, energetic people, in the next 10 years, you'll be the third largest nation in the world. And if you, uh, on the path that we have recently seen, floating of Naira, taking fuel subsidy out, organizing your you know, oil production in a better way, I think the future is going to be glorious for this country. Thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, and your subscribe, subscribe, and hit it. Face TV, Muswobi.